Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be looking at Ribbit's part of theorem three, the main result of this chapter, which I'll recall below. Over the course of this video and the next video, we'll be finishing the proof of Ribbit's theorem. So let's get into it. Recall, we're trying to prove the following crucial result. And we looked at Mazur's part of the proof last video. So theorem three, let's let P be a prime that's at least three. Let's let rho from GQ to GL2 of FP bar be irreducible and modular of some type N to one over QP bar where N is square free. If rho is flat at P, then rho is actually modular of type N of rho to one over QP bar where N of rho is the conductor of rho. If rho is not flat at P, then rho is modular of type P times N of rho to one over QP bar, okay? So this will finish the proof of Ribbit's theorem. What's left to prove is Ribbit's part, which says let P be a prime that's at least three. Let rho from GQ to GL2 of FP bar be irreducible and modular of some type N to one over QP bar. Suppose that L is a prime that isn't P, that L divides N, but that L squared doesn't divide N, and that rho is unramified at L. Then there's a prime Q, which is negative one mod P, that doesn't divide N, such that rho is modular of type QN over L to one over QP bar. So we're able to lower the level by dividing out the level by L at the expense of raising the level by Q, but then remember Mazur's part will take care of that Q. Okay, so let's look at the proof of the of this. Again, we'll be doing this over the course of two videos because it's quite difficult. First of all, you should consult Ribbit's paper. I think it's called From the Taniyama Shimura Conjecture to Fermat's Last Theorem, and then you should read his actual Inventionis 100 paper for details and references regarding the following discussion at large in this entire video in the next video. That's the original paper. There's also chapter seven of Cornell, Silverman, Stevens. Okay, so first some terminology. Let's let B be a place of Q, so a prime given by an equivalence class of absolute values. And let's let Q be a quaternion algebra over the rationals, which is a central simple algebra over Q. Define Q sub V to be the rationals completed at B, uh, sorry, Q tensored up to the rationals completed at B, which is a quaternion algebra over the rationals completed at B. Okay, two things can happen. Either Q is unramified at B, which means QV is isomorphic to the group of two by two matrices over the rationals completed at B, or Q is ramified at B, which means Q sub V is the quaternion division algebra over the rationals completed at B. The discriminant of such a Q is the product of the ramified primes of Q. Okay, so you can see Milne's class field theory for an introduction to the idea of central simple algebras, but there are dedicated texts to this topic that you can find with a quick Google search. Okay, so that's just some terminology to get out of the way. Let's let M be N over L. Let's let Q be a prime not dividing NP with the property that rho of Frobenius at Q is rho of C, where C is complex conjugation. This is possible by Chebotar of density, basically. This condition is well known to imply Q equals negative one mod P. Okay, let's let B sub Q be the quaternion algebra over Q of discriminant LQ. And let's let B be a maximal order in B sub Q. So an order is just something that spans over Q, which is a lattice over C. And then maximal means just take a biggest one of those things. Define C sub Q to be the Shimura curve associated to B sub Q of level gamma zero of M. What the heck does that mean? It's a coarse moduli scheme. So it kind of parameterizes triples A over S alpha G, where S is a Q scheme. A over S is an abelian scheme of relative dimension two, which means all of its non-empty structural fibers A sub S for S and S are equidimensional abelian varieties of dimension two. Where alpha is a ring map from B to the S endomorphisms of A, and G and A is a finite flat closed subgroup scheme of rank M squared, which is killed by M. So that means you look at the group outputs and all the elements are killed by M. So we talked about what that means in chapter five. Okay, and then I also want G to be stable under the action of B. You can see Milne's introduction to Shimura varieties for a background on Shimura varieties and curves at large, although Ribbit's paper gives you basically the references that you need to learn about the Shimura stuff that you need here. Okay, let's let JQ be the Jacobian of CQ. The moduli interpretation of CQ I just gave you allows me to define Hacker correspondences on CQ, surprise, surprise which induce endomorphisms T sub N of JQ. So again, we have a Hecke action moving up to the Jacobian, no surprise. Let's let T be the subring of Q endomorphisms of JQ generated by these T sub Ns. Again, the, T's, the T sub Ns can be actually thought of as uh, endomorphisms over Q again, not just over C. There are the C chapter three in my notes, we already talked about this, uh, the usual pairs of natural maps from the modular curve X zero of MLQ, uh, it, it's rational model, to X zero of ML over Q and to X zero of MQ over Q. One of the maps is forgetting the level and the other one is dividing by the level. So we've talked about this before. Okay, so we'll call these the degeneracy maps sometimes. 
okay, a map of curves will give me a map of Jacobians. Here's the morphism. It's a morphism from J0 of MLQ over Q to J0 of ML squared over Q to J0 of MQ squared over Q, okay? So we've already seen in chapter three how this works. Let's define the subvariety J0 of MLQ over Q with the superscript LQ nu of J0 of MLQ over Q to be the connected component of the identity of the kernel of this map. So take the kernel of this map, take the connected component of the identity, that's your LQ nu space. It's a hard theorem requiring work from a lot of people, in particular the Jacques de Langlands correspondence and Faulting's isogeny theorem, that JQ, the Jacobian, is actually Q isogenous to this LQ nu space. Okay, so Ribbit, what he does is he makes this more precise by appealing to character groups of the torus parts of the reduction model and Q of the Jacobians of these curves. So that's what we're going to look at today. So specifically, concretely, if, if G is a commutative algebraic K group where K is a field, let's define X of G to be the character group scheme of the maximal torus TK bar of GK bar. So GK bar is the base change to the algebraic closure of K. That is, X of G is the K bar maps from TK bar to the multiplicative group GM K bar. Ribbit constructs an exact sequence from zero to X of JFQ to X of J0 MLQ mod L to X of J0 ML squared mod L to zero, which is HECA equivariant, which means that for each N, the HECA operator here, so the HECA operator in T0 at level MLQ induces the actual element TN of T we just talked about above on X JFQ here. So TN here induces the TN down here. That's what HECA equivariant means. Now, you have this symmetry between L and Q in the level, right? So you should be able to make another exact sequence just like this by swapping all the Qs and the Ls. And so we do that. We have that as well. So this is, I'll call this Ribbit's first exact sequence and this Ribbit's second exact sequence from here on out. Okay, so remember, Mazer had two exact sequences. Now Ribbit has two. Ribbit's going to end up with two more by the end of this video. So we're going to have six exact sequences total that we'll need for the proof. Actually, we're going to need seven, but... Uh, these sequences are built using the work of a variety of people. I mean, you've got Drinfeld, you've got Carriel, and so on. Basically, you use the Q-adic uniformization of C thought of as living over Q sub Q, the Q-adic numbers. Okay, uh, I gave you a reference here to learn more about that. It follows from the first exact sequence above, amazingly, I think this is amazing at least, that the Hecke algebra T0 at level MLQ acts on the Jacobian JQ via a unique morphism of rings from the Hecke algebra T0 at level MLQ to T, the Hecke algebra of the Shimura curve. And what do you know? It sends TN to TN. Well, I, I think this is amazing because this is just like a Hecke algebra on a modular curve. This is a Hecke algebra on some seemingly very unrelated Shimura curve. And so then we have this unique ring map between them that tells you how the, the modular curve Hecke algebra acts on the Jacobian that sends TN to TN, I think that's interesting. It's probably not unexpected, but it's interesting. Okay, let A to sub Q be the element TQ squared minus one in T0 of MLQ. And let phi sub F sub Q be the group of connected components of J mod Q. So that's the Jacobian base change to FQ. If M is a finite abelian group from here on out, let's let M star be the Z maps from M to Q mod Z. That'll be its contrag and dual. By Ribbit's paper, Theorem 4.3, there's a Hecke equivariant exact sequence, which I'll call Ribbit's third exact sequence, zero to KL to X of J zero of ML squared mod L mod eight of Q times that to phi dual mod Q to CQ to zero. What is KL? What is CQ? They're special group schemes. They're basically Eisenstein, which means kind of away from the level that we're working at. The Hecke operators, let's say T sub Q act as Q plus one multiplication by Q plus one. So they're very special group schemes, okay? Again, though, we can play on the symmetry between L and Q. We should get an exact sequence that's the exact same, except for the Ls and the Qs are switched. And of course, we get that. Okay. And these, the CL and the KQ that appear here, are also Eisenstein. Okay, great. So, since we're assuming rho is modular of type ML21 over QP bar, right? So, rho arises from a maximal ideal of T0 of ML in the same way as we discussed in Major's part of the proof last video. It's straightforward to check that rho also then arises from a maximal ideal, which we'll call M of T0 at level MLQ. So we can bump up the level to MLQ and we still get a maximal ideal that gives us rho. That is, as discussed last video, there's a maximal ideal M of T0 at level MLQ. An embedding of K, which is T0 of MLQ mod M into FB bar, a two-dimensional K vector space V equipped with a Galois action such that V tensored up to FB bar gives me the representation space for rho. And such that J0 of MLQ's Q bar points and then take the M torsion is isomorphic to V to the lambda 
for some lambda and n. Crucially, lambda is a positive integer. It cannot be zero. Okay, that's because rho is modular of type ML21. And we call lambda here the multiplicity at m of rho and j0 of MLQ. Now, look, I mean, rho, there's a, a, a multiplicity of rho at m in just the big Jacobian jq too, right? We'll call that mu. So that is uh, j, the q bar points of jq and then take the m torsion is isomorphic to v to the mu. Okay, now again, all of this only makes sense if we believe Boston Lenstra Ribbit's result that this m torsion of jq of q bar is semi simple, or else this, has, this doesn't really mean anything. And mu is at least zero, of course. All right, so the conclusion of this video is that what we're going to do next time is we're going to go, we're going to prove Ribbit's theorem by contradiction. We're going to suppose rho is actually not modular of type mq21 over qp bar. We will use this assumption the six or seven exact sequences that we have so far. I think we have six now and we'll have one again next time to show basically that two mu is less than or equal to lambda and that two lambda is less than or equal to two mu, which is a contradiction because mu is a non-negative integer and lambda is a strictly positive integer. This is quite difficult. We'll rely heavily on SGA chapter nine, section 11, for example, and some other results. And we'll begin to tackle that argument next video. It's actually a pretty cool argument. So I'll see you then and thanks for watching.